Spurs two, Brighton one. Can you Spurs? Stay till the end. <laughs> I mean, yes, Sir. So good, good. Listen, my games have last minute goals in them every week, so of course I stay till the end. You need to, yeah. Can't guarantee which way, but this time it was uh, in favour of you, and uh, you come away with a two-one win. So first, what? third, third injury time winner in home games this year. And when I say injury time, that was plus. 96. Yeah, yeah. Matic's own goal plus. was similar and Kulazewski was, what, 100 yeah. against Sheffield United? That's so, I mean, crazy. they really are late, late. Yeah, you yeah, definitely can't argue with your season ticket price. You're getting your money's worth, James. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> after the last few years. And yeah. what a goal that second goal is, which, when you break it down, kind of epitomises how this game went because Tottenham play out from the back, as they want to do, and Madison drops deep. And if you watch it back, the player that's following him is Jan-Paul Van Heck, who's the right-sided centre-back for Brighton. They played a back four at the weekend. Um, after the ball goes into Madison, Van Heck gets drawn because M- M- uh, Richarlison's dropped short into a zone similar with Sun. Obviously, Richarlison stayed as the nine. Who's following Richarlison? It's Lewis Dunk, the other centre-back. Van Heck very briefly gets drawn towards Richarlison rather than to the ball to Madison. By the time he's going back, Madison's thread the ball into Richarlison and now suddenly Tottenham have got a four on three running at Brighton's back line. But not only is it a four versus three, it's a four versus three and none of Brighton's three are any of their centre-backs. <laughs> that late in the game at 1-1. And that's not a criticism of Brighton because a lot of what they did man-to-man in the game worked really well. There was a moment in the first half, Serge, and I kid you not this happened, where Tottenham had the ball and Brighton's most advanced player was Van Heck. Mad. Because he's gone to Madison. He'd, his job was getting to Madison all the time, go so yeah, man yeah. to man. And two of Tottenham's furthest forward players, Benson Cora disappeared from the sixth position and Porro disappeared from right back to go and play up with Richarlison. And the two players that went back with those two players, respectively, were Matoma and Welbeck. They looked like holding midfield players in that moment. That's not to say those two players weren't a threat. Welbeck very nearly scored in the game. Mitoma, oh Back my With a bang God. from Japan. He made me laugh he, a laugh at one point. He had a point in the second half where he done Porro inside out and Van der Ven came across. And you know when Van der Ven comes across, you think, oh, you're done, mate, because he's so quick and stuff. He see him coming, waited for him to come, and he just went, boop. Through his legs, gone. And skinned him. Oh, my days. <laughs> if Tottenham just bought Matoma in the summer and used all their budget on that... <laughs> you would be happy. I, I can't think... I've said this a few times. People say, oh, who'd be perfect for Angie's system? Get me Caro Matoma. What a... Bl- considering he ain't played in the Premier League for like but two months been ages. as well. He's been out, yeah. And off the ball, he tracked Porro all through the game. So I know there's a lot of, oh, Porro's expected goal involvement was shit at the week. A lot of that is because Matoma's going and following him and doing brilliant defensive work as well. So I thought he was, he was excellent. His first touch is good. When he runs at you, he's got this kind of almost, I don't want to say languid style about him, but he just is in control. And it's like he can flick a switch and he's, he's gone at so much After speed. Burners. Yeah, he's rapid. Whoa, they have a very a good run for the next four. Sheffield they United, do. Everton, Fulham, Forest. I don't know how many will and won't look at them because they haven't got, obviously, a double in there. So you're prioritising maybe the likes of Bournemouth or a second Luton over the likes of Brighton. Um, but they do play in 26. Obviously, that it's not one of the four blanking teams. And um, maybe they will get people through. The game week 29 fixture, you've got to assume, is probably and not going to happen. it's good, right? Sheffield United away, Everton at home. But guess what? Those fixtures might be a problem for them. Low blocks. Yeah, low blocks. Now, they did win 5-2 at Sheffield United in the Cup very recently. But that also means Sheffield United have had an opportunity to look at them. That yeah. said, system-wise, probably going to be different because they played a back three recently and they moved to a back four. So uh, Tarek Lamptey played right back. And Stupanan played left back. Um, Joel Veltman's fit, so that gives them another option at right back as well. Jack Hinsherwood, um, Deserby's assistant manager, uh, said that he wasn't raced. There, are, there have been some reports that it could be a bad injury and he's been really good for them, Jack Hinsherwood. I also think they've left themselves a little bit light in midfield. Like, I think it's clear that Gross and Gilmore are the best two for them. Some of Gilmore's distribution, by the way, between lines, really, really good. Gross was his normal creative menace and obviously took the pens with João Pedro injured. So 
I see a lot of people saying, oh, Bench Gross again. Actually, other than the pen, there wasn't too much creativity from him in the game. But he'll probably be on them while Joel Pedro's out injured. But I, I, I worry about the depth again for them there once the European games start up, which is obviously between 27 and 28. I think you're right, Serge. I think they'll largely be ignored because they don't, they don't have any doubles coming up. And the 29 fixture is obviously the least likely, basically, of all the games to happen because they're due to play Manchester City, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. And so, Spurs, same thing. No buy territory because of the blank next week. No, but the difference with Tottenham is, obviously... They do play, they do in, play 29. in 29. Um, to buy blank, after 26, though. Blank for Richarlison. Um, didn't really... It was working off scraps in the... In the second half, he did a lot of coming towards the ball, allowed that second goal to try mm. and create space for others. Look, the equalising goal, Saar tries to find him and he'd have a tap in if it goes to him. Saar obviously ends up scoring. Played fine. Um, I think Sun being back on had more of an impact on Werner. This was Werner's poorest game for Tottenham so far. So I feel like that's the easiest change next week will be Sun in for Werner rather than Sun in for Richardson. Not that Werner was terrible, by the way. Just actually, he'd done really well in his first few. Was a bit quieter in this one. I think going against Lamps, he was like, I'm not doing this kid for pace because he's rapid, rapid, isn't he? So, yeah, please. I think a draw probably would have been a fair result. Um, could have gone either way. Brighton were a better team in the first half. The first 20, 25 minutes of the second half, we were exceptional. And actually, Ange made a substitution that did my nutting. Because in the first 15 minutes of the second half, Kulazewski had his stupid hand on strings. He had him all over the place. He turned him inside out. Kulazewski has this sometimes. I don't know why it happens. But he can have these really quiet first halves. You think he's not in it, he's not in it. And the second half starts bang he's on it and it's like he's he's not just running at people and he's crossing it's like he's he's like he's running the football match from out wide suddenly he was having his best period for us in ages we equalized and Ange took him off and I was not happy at all and it impacted the team negatively quite badly for a little while that it took us a while to recover and we went from a control phase where it looked like Brighton were then going to win the game now of course who replaced Decky Brennan Johnson we lost our control. What's the one thing I've been really praising of Brennan Johnson, though? Oh, his, his work rate. Not so much Taking that. It's his finishing. Yeah. When he, when, the, the one thing I do like about him, and I've said this, I can't think that he's had many big ch chances for Tottenham and missed. He's just not really been having them. That there where it comes across the box, it looks easy, but watch back. And it's the same for the Brentford goal, which is very similar a couple of weeks ago. His timing and his execution of the run and his calmness when he gets there is like he's cold. He's a killer. Really good in terms of his finishing. There's not a lot else I like about his play at the moment. But give him the chance in front of goal, it looks like he'll finish. That in itself will at points make him a good fantasy asset, I think, at points in the future. That moment is not now. Nah. 